Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. I'm now going to start working on the um, dragon skull that's going to sit on my shoulder as part of the neck corset which is part of a bigger costume. Um, it's sort of a dragon themed costume in subtle ways I suppose. Um, I want to have elements of you know dragon scales, a dragon skull, um, potentially if I have time a dragon headpiece as well but yeah today I am hoping to put together a dragon skull that's going to sit on my armor um, I've been working on the simplicity pattern if you've been following the videos you've seen the progress so far um, I've done a whole host of beadwork on the neck corset um, I've got spikes on one side of the shoulder because um, it's got two different um, arms. Uh, let me hold this up and show you. So I've got spikes on the little capped sleeve and then I want instead of the armor that they have um, on the shoulder there, I want to put a dragon skull possibly some other detailing as well depending on what looks good like I've thought about putting some lace and stuff underneath the skull you know peering out and stuff but we'll see how it all comes together um, you know I'm, I'm open to going in the direction that it that feels right um, so I'm gonna start working on that and I'll take you down to the table and mostly it's going to be sped through because this is going to take me a while. So to get started I'm going to start sculpting with the foil. Um, foil is really good as a base uh, when you're doing something with clay because you can really, you can kind of sculpt uh, foil as it is and um, I want it to be on my shoulder so I'm going to try and uh, make sure that the shape underneath would fit over a shoulder but also make the um, skull hollow as well um, it's just going to use less clay and be lighter and then I need to um, probably pierce some holes into it so that it can be um, attached probably I, I want to do some stitching as well as glue just to make sure it's really strong so uh, I printed off some pictures just off the internet of some different dragon skull potentials um, you know you can do the same thing if you're trying to do um, something like this I worked out I wanted a skull that has like horns on it um, I I like it sort of being um, almost have scales on the um, on the skull itself there was a really great video and if I remember to I'll link it I think it was called Pal Thai or something like that it was about um, this special type of clay and she was sculpting this massive massive dragon skull and looks really bloody awesome on YouTube so look it up it's um I think if you just look up dragon skull it comes up and it's this big mounted you know massive thing that looks amazing if I could get anything even remotely like that uh, for my shoulder that would be really cool um, I, yeah like I said I do want the horns but I need to make sure that they're not going to be in my way so I, I don't know thinking about it I probably can't have them bend towards me to have to have the horns sort of bend up and around or something so I haven't quite worked that part out yet uh, and then maybe I might even have to leave the horns off if they're going to be a pain or sit the um, skull more down my arm so that the um, horns stick up is the other thing I'm thinking I could potentially do so I'm going to work around and try and see what, what will work best um, I got super sculpty I got the firm but I kind of wish I got the uh, soft now I feel like that would have been a bit easier to work with over the top of the foil I'm not I am not sort of a master um, sculptor or anything like that I'm just trying some different things so um, I do also have a little bit of medium left but not a lot and I do have um, some other poly clays and stuff but I, I might save those for um, other projects 
So I'm hoping this will work out, but it's going to be um, tough to warm it up because it's the firm one, which is always a bit of a pain in the bum the, when you're trying to work the clay to a warm temperature to work with. Um, but anyway, I'm going to take it down onto the table now so that um, you can see what I'm doing and let's see how this all comes out. So I'm using foil as a base for my skull. Um, I've used this for sculpting things in the past. It's really good for a base. Um, it's obviously a lot lighter than clay. And in particular, that's what I wanted in this um, skull because it's sitting on my shoulder. So I didn't want anything, you know, too heavy. Um, it still had a fair bit of weight to it anyway because of the amount of clay needed to sculpt it. But this is a really good um, way to start developing the shape. Uh, I did need to use a little bit of hot glue just to tack certain pieces on uh, because, you know, unless you're sort of wrapping the foil around itself, it may not stick fully. So uh, the hot glue does come in handy as you're going along. the shape basically there I started to warm up the clay now I'm using a sculpty clay I had mainly sculpty in hard um, I also had a little bit of medium as well and I decided to use the medium um, because I had it there so I thought why not and use that firstly and then mixed in the hard honestly I didn't notice a, a big difference between the medium and the hard So I sort of um, had it at about a five millimeter thickness because I thought that was a, a good amount of thickness that allowed me some sculpting ability um, and a little bit of strength as well, but then not too heavy. So you can see I had to roll out a few pieces to really cover the whole thing, um, but it's easy enough to incorporate into itself. Once the clay's warmed up, it works in pretty well. And I didn't want to cover the bottom because I'm wanting it to be hollow, so I want to remove some of that foil once I'm done. And I also want it to sort of sit over my shoulder, so I want a bit of hollowness, I guess, so that it could sit um, over the shape of my shoulder. Now I did have some reference pictures that I kept nearby as I was sculpting this and I just pulled out various elements that I thought I'd like to incorporate. Um, I sort of went for a skull that looked like it had some scales on it and that sort of shape. So I started with um, a bit of a muzzle type shape and then some scales going down the front of the skull. But you can totally use your artistic license here. Um, obviously a dragon's a mythical creature so uh, there's lots of different ways to interpret that and this is just the way that I went for this one. Now 
Now these are just some um, like wax carving tools, quite cheap ones actually, they're plastic ones. Um, and one of them had these grooves in it that worked perfectly to make these shapes. If you don't have that though, I'm sure using like a fork would do the exact same thing. And it just adds a bit of that um, natural bone um, grooves that you would see in say horns and things. Basically you do want some um, uh, different textures and things that make it look a bit more natural as a skull. So you want some of those grooves, you want some imperfections, um, maybe even cracks. Um, of course, you know, you don't want it to fall apart, but um, you do like want to put a bit of texture in there. Uh, and I decided to put some nostrils on him because, you know, he's a fire-breathing dragon, needs to have some nostrils. And I didn't want to have them on that front sort of muzzle part because I like the shape. So I decided to set them back in the skull a little bit. Now, you guys, if you watch my videos, would have seen me share these beads when I showed a haul of beads that was planned for this costume and true to my word I am using them in um, like the sculpture parts that I'm doing this is exactly what I had envisaged with um, these spikes to use them as parts of the headpiece but also parts of potentially the skull and it's just giving a really nice uniform spiked row um, so I liked that combination of that with the sculpted clay. Now I did want some teeth as well but I had to be really careful with the teeth. The teeth are sitting where it will sit on my shoulder and could very easily break. So what I actually did was have them come, um, instead of come down from the skull as teeth normally would, I had them stick straight out. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's got a bit of an, an overbite, um, needs some braces or something like that, but uh, this way I had less chance of those teeth breaking because they were going to sit out from my arm instead of sticking down into it. I just added some additional little details like these sort of fin shapes um, again I had to be a bit careful of where I put them I originally wanted to have them sitting towards the back of the skull but I knew that they could easily uh, break off so I really wanted them somewhere a little bit tucked away um, and I had to make sure that they were nice and strong on there as well so I baked this, um, obviously I didn't show it in the video, but it's now baked and I'm pulling out some of that foil. You could leave the foil in there honestly, but I just wanted to remove at least some of it um, so that I could have a bit of a shape for it to go over my shoulder. And for added security, I put some hot glue into some of the crevices. Um, I could have probably sculpted it differently instead of using the hot glue, but once I had a look at it afterwards, I just wanted some um, reinforcement of some of those um, sticking out pieces because they could more easily break off if they don't have something sitting behind them to give them strength. So adding those bits of glue, while it's not the neatest, nicest finish, um, just adds a bit of strength to the piece. And this is going to be on my arm and, you know, a lot of movement and things, so it needs to have that strength. So to actually attach it, I decided to um, punch holes into it just by hand using these wax carving tools I had. Um, and I didn't actually film it, I thought I did, but um, I stitched it onto my arm uh, firstly, and that's coming up as well. Um, and those holes allowed me to put those stitches into the piece itself. 
So this is some black enamel paint that I've used for so many things, including my craft cupboards. I still have a little bit of it left, so why not use it? Uh, then I'm dry brushing with a mixture I made. It's grey, but I added a bit of brown because I didn't want it to be too stark. I wanted a bit more of a natural grey. So the grey with some brown in it, I liked the tone of it. You can't tell from looking at it, but if I had have used... Um, pure grey would have looked a bit starker. And you can see some of those details uh, showing up now that uh, I'm using the dry brush and that's the beauty of using dry brushing techniques is that it does leave the colour in the grooves and shows up a lot more detail which is why I like using this technique. Um, and then I've got bronze um, rubbing wax which looks so perfect on this just to use um, as an accent and then on the very tips I've used some gold to really make it pop. Now this is the part I was talking about. I've actually sewn this already onto the piece with a really strong, um, I think it's called dandelion, the thread that I used and so it's really securely on there already but then to add extra security because I mean this is gonna have to stay on my arm I'm gluing these pieces of the leather uh, across certain parts of the skull and then down onto the arm itself now I had to do this in stages because um, it was difficult to get the straps to sit exactly where I wanted them to if I did it all at once. So I glued first over the areas of the skull, I let that dry and then once that was set up I um, glued the remaining straps down onto the piece itself. And I like this look because I feel like these straps look like part of working armour. So I ended up putting some um, bronze um, findings on the ends and that made it look like they were straps and things that were part of the armour. Now for accents I had this uh, gold lace that I've um, glued underneath the piece. Now this is very much from my original inspiration from Hysteria Machine. Uh, the picture I showed when I was starting out this costume. Um, I'll see if I remember to link back to that. Uh, and where there was a skull and these lace pieces that were coming from underneath the skull. So I really wanted to incorporate that into this given it was my original inspiration for the piece. Even though this looks nothing like that piece, it's you know clearly taken its own direction, um, which I'd much prefer it that it does that. Uh, but you know I loved that look of that opulent um, lace and rich reds and you know the skull as part of the armor so that's sort of those inspirations coming out and if you recall this is the other capped sleeve where I was putting on some of those studs I did end up using a little bit of glue as well just to keep them in place and then there was a, just a ton of stitching to stitch everything down which I don't show at all in this one. Um, I hope you're enjoying seeing the progress. Coming up is a tiny little sneak peek of me at the Goblin Ball with this on my shoulder and there'll be more to come very soon. Thanks for tuning in guys, see you next time. Bye guys.